Okay. So my image is there. Okay. Bah. It cannot happen. <laughs> but the camera is this one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for these technical explanations about the the work through video conferences, which changes uh, changes the scenario and changes the way of working. Thank you for waiting. The conference, the meeting, the discussion with the Foreign Affairs Minister of China, Wang Yi, has been longer than expected. It has been a long meeting. This is a meeting to prepare the 10th annual strategic, uh, no, this was the strategic dialogue, the 10th time that this takes place between the European Union and China to prepare the forthcoming uh, summit. It was my first time in which I have a strategic uh, dialogue with the, the Foreign Affairs Minister as High Representative, but uh, it was already our fourth opportunity of discussion since I started my mandate. It had to be a virtual meeting, but we had an in-depth exchange during more than three hours. We discussed a wide range of topics reflecting the broad relations we have. And we had a very open and frank dialogue. We addressed first our bilateral relationship to prepare as I said, the forthcoming EU-China summit by the end of this month of June. We took stock of the progress made in the negotiations of uh, Agenda 2025 and agreed on the need to move forward on the remaining areas in which there are still uh, concrete disagreements. And I underline the need to accelerate our work towards a comprehensive agreement on investment. In particular, I highlighted the importance of reaffirming all relevant commitments from the 2019 summit, which have not yet been adequately implemented, notably on the issue of market access, improving level playing field, and reciprocity, where from the European Union side there are important concerns. But we want our cooperation agenda 2025 to be mutually satisfactory, and we will engage on talks in order to do so. We also seek to have a balance and reciprocal approach on our cooperation, including areas such as uh, connectivity, an important issue, connectivity, free trade, science cooperation, and also on media and cultural cooperation. We expect to hold our usual human rights dialogue as soon as physical meetings will resume but nevertheless, we raise a number of important human rights issues, including the situation in Xinjiang and Tibet, and also raise an important number of individual cases. Of course, I also raise the steps taken by China and Hong Kong, which risk seriously to undermine the own country to system principle and the high degree of autonomy of Hong Kong. And I've been talking about this issue, receiving explanations from the China side, but I put on the table the need that uh, China takes a step to de-escalate the situation and respect the international commitments and the Hong Kong basic law. This way about our bilateral relations. Then we have uh, an important number of multilateral issues in particular the coronavirus pandemic and international response to the crisis. We agree on the need to continue working together on global challenges. Some of them will be even more important in the post-COVID-19 world, in particular the need 
to hold to our commitment to fight climate change and reach the objectives of the 2030 Agenda and the Paris Agreement, for sure. We will have to, to build back better, all of us. We all need to seize this opportunity to transform our economies and societies in a green and sustainable way. We talk about non-proliferation, including GCPOA, as coordinator of the implementation of this agreement, I expressed to my Chinese counterpart my appreciation for the support they are giving to maintain the efforts to keep this agreement in place. As global actors, we also discuss about international and regional conflicts and the pursuit of stability in all corners of the world, from Afghanistan to Libya, Korea Peninsula, the Middle East, Syria, and most specifically, our further cooperation in and with Africa. Also, in particular, the framework of the effects and economic consequences of the pandemic. This cooperation could cover many areas, among them debt relief, support for the health sector, and economic development. Our strategic dialogue was a very intensive and substantial meeting. China is without a doubt one of the key global players. This is a fact, and China will increase its global role. And we have to engage with China to achieve our global objectives based on our interests and values. I am very happy to have had this important meeting, and I hope it will contribute to the success of the forthcoming EU-China summit. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will uh, now go to your questions. Um, I will start with David, David Carreta. Thank you. David Carreta, and to all, please remember to introduce yourself and uh, the media you are working for uh, before as asking your question. So this is David Carreta from Radio Radical. Yes, thank you. David Carreta, Radio Radical Italian Radio. Uh, two questions, if I may, hi, Rep. The first one on Hong Kong. Did you receive any commitment uh, by the Chinese foreign minister on the de-escalation and the principle one country, two system. The second question, uh, did you raise the issue of disinformation campaign by China in the EU? And if yes, what was your message? Thank you. Well, it is not the first time that the State Councillor heard about uh, our position in Hong Kong. And we have been very clear that the imposition of uh, the Bay Beijing of the national security legislation on Hong Kong undermines this autonomy and poses genuine problems politically and economically. Uh, the Chinese minister reiterated the Beijing positions, insisting on the fact that uh, from their point of view, it doesn't uh, jeopardize uh, the fact of uh, one country, two systems. It's just uh, it's a way of looking for increasing security in Hong Kong and that this law should have been approved by the Assembly of Hong Kong on the last uh, many years and that they didn't do it. We've changed views about that and we we insisted on the need for China to uphold its international commitments and to respect the agreements they made with the United Kingdom. About this information, this is something that is a, is a cross-section issue. Uh, on any issue, there is a disinformation process underlining and for sure have been exchanging 
about the role that uh, today information and disinformation plays on the on the geopolitics. We have been talking about it and we have insisting on the need to offer citizens a true and fair information and as you know tomorrow the commission will approve a communication on that. I informed the minister about our efforts in order to fight this information wherever it comes. Thank you. Um, I will now go to Lawrence, Lawrence Norman. Okay. We, we couldn't hear you. We briefly saw you, Lawrence. So um, while maybe you, you fix uh, things on your side, I would go to Stuart. I know you're back. Try again. Lawrence, what's uh, happening with you? <laughs> I'm sorry, Lawrence. The, we cannot hear you. So um, please try to see if your microphone is... Uh, is fixed and then we, we go to uh, Stuart in the meantime. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Cool. Uh, hi, Representative. Uh, so on, two, on, on, on the two major issues that you just outlined, namely the investment agreement and the, the EU's concern over the situation in Hong Kong, uh, it seems that the Chinese um, foreign minister's remarks to you today um, basically repeat um, the usual sort of Chinese position. Um, are you satisfied with these repeated Chinese positions on these two very critical issues for the EU? And um, if you're not, what would be your message to your fellow foreign ministers in the EU? Thank you. Well, today's meeting is not the end of the world. <laughs> Uh, it is not the last moment in which our relationship uh, has to continue developing. No? It's, it's important to have exchanges of views. We based our relationship in a mutual trust and will of cooperation, and this has to be built. And, and how, do we, how do you build uh, this? By having meetings, discussing, presenting their points of view, noting the disagreements, trying to look for agreements. For sure, we haven't found an agreement on everything. This, the work continues. The summit is by the end of the month, and we still have time in order to try to build on one thing that can be a deliverable of the summit, which is the Agenda 2025, which are the concrete issues. But you know, uh, you know, I understand that for China to, to be presented as a systemic rival, no? it, it's something that uh, look a little bit uh, controversial. No? Now we have to explain why do you, what do we mean by that, no? and to try to express how complex is our relations, in which things we are disappointed, in which we have. Uh, points in which we need to, to, to improve our relations, mainly on the economic side and the human rights side. I was not expecting to go out of this meeting with a full agreement on everything. No? Um, thank you. Uh, I'll try again, Lawrence. No, it seems to be a problem with your microphone. Okay, um, Thomas. No, Thomas Guske. Can you hear me now? Yes, okay, it should, should be working. Um, uh, hi, Rip, you were mentioning um, uh, that you exchanged views on many issues. Has there been any issue where you made uh, progress in these talks 
um, so um, that uh, a future summit with China would be uh, better prepared than actually it is now. Thanks a lot. Yes, uh, I think that uh, both parts agreed on working constructively and to show flexibility in order to reach agreements on the pending issues on the agenda 2025. I think this is today the most important deliverable on the table. The investment agreement is not, uh, it will not be ready for the, for the summit, that, that's clear. But on the agenda 2025, it's possible yet. And uh, also on the declaration of the summit, which contained important political positions, where we can enhance in which we are sharing a common approach. And I think that it's important also to, to show our, our common understanding on many things. For example, on GCPOA, on the Iran nuclear deal, that's clear that there we have a, an important convergence of positions. On Afghanistan, also, we share the same interest on ensuring the stability of the country once the retreat of the American troops will be affected and the negotiations between the government and the Taliban will reach will reach an end. On Africa cooperation to fight coronavirus and debt relief and all efforts to increase cooperation because in order to fight against the pandemia, I think the world needs more cooperation and less confrontation. And on that, I think there is a fertile ground to work together. No? Thank you. Rather than trying again, I will read the question from Lawrence Norman from the Wall Street Journal. Uh, he had two questions. First question, did you raise the systemic rival issue? Is that something that you have uh, taken issue with, that the Chinese have taken issue with? And then I'll let you respond to that and I'll ask the second question from Lawrence. We talk a lot about it. You know, um, words matters, and sometimes they matter a lot. I am sure this important communication about China of uh, last year, it was in March 2019, has got a, quite an important relevance, maybe thanks to, to these two words, no? Systemic rival. And and what does it mean? No? Because the word rival on, uh, on the diplomatic language, it's something important because it's not, let's say, a soft word. No? And this has attracted a lot of interest. No? It's a rival, what do you mean by that? What does it mean? Rival on what? Systemic, is that a matter of um, rivalry among systems? or it is a systematic rivalry. There are two interpretations, no? There are two interpretations. Is it a systematic rivalry or is it a rivalry between systems? Systems, which kind of systems? And that's clear that we don't have the same political system, no? And that's clear that China defends its political system as we do with our system, no? It's, China, it's, it's clear that uh, China has a global ambition, but at the same time, I don't think China is playing a, a role that can threaten the world peace. No? And they committed once and again on the fact that they want to be present in the world and to play a global role, but they don't have uh, military ambitions and they don't want to use the force and to participate in military conflicts. What do, what do we mean by rivalry? Well, let's go over this word. There is uh, sometimes differences on interest. There are differences on values. That's, that's right. That's a fact of life. 
and it's also a fact of life that we have to cooperate because you cannot imagine how we can solve the climate challenge without a strong cooperation with China. And you cannot build a multilateral world without China participating on it effectively and not, um, let's say, in a China way, but in a way that can be accepted by everybody. And I think this kind of explanation is good because I can tell you that we have talked a lot about what does it mean to be a systemic rival. With the second question from Lawrence, did you discuss the U.S. push for an arms embargo extension under the GCPOA, and what you would do about it? Yes, this is a point in which we agree. We agree, and uh, that uh, the, the embargo was uh, taken at a certain moment with a certain schedule of time, uh, the United States has withdrawn from the GCPOA, and now they cannot claim that they are still part of the GCPOA in order to deal with this issue from the GCPOA agreement. No? They withdraw. It's clear, they withdraw. Um, now I will go to um, Shona, Shona Murray. News. Um, could you let us know what uh, type of trust you have in terms of uh, your ongoing relations with China, I suppose given the fact that there has been uh, misinformation, um, concerns about transparency over COVID-19 and, and other reasons to maybe not trust them as strongly as we might hope. Thank you. See, uh, yes, you are, you are right. I think it was uh, some weeks ago that I, in an interview with, uh, with the French press, I said that uh, Europe has been too naive uh, in their relations with China. I said that several times. And I think that we have to build uh, a relations, a realistic relations. We need uh, a realistic relations with China in order to defend our values and interests. Uh, thank you. Um, I will now go to Nureddin. Bonjour Virginie, bonjour Monsieur le haut représentant. Euh, Noreddin Fridi de la télévision. Virginie, tu m'entends Oui, on t'entend. Est-ce que oui, on Ah oui. Bonjour Monsieur le euh, Borel. J'ai préparé mes questions en français. Si vous voulez bien, est-ce que vous avez discuté de la crise Ah oui, pardon. Oui. Noureddin Fredi, je suis le correspondant de la chaîne de télévision et d'information continue à l'Arabia News Channel. Et je voudrais vous poser la question sur la Libye. Avez-vous discuté de la crise libyenne avec votre, votre homologue chinois euh, Sur cette question, avez-vous été approché par votre collègue, le, le ministre des Affaires étrangères égyptien, sur son communiqué le samedi dernier Vous-même ou bien vous, diplomates, étiez-vous ces derniers jours, depuis le vendredi, disons, en contact avec M. Savage ou bien avec son ministre des Affaires étrangères Enfin, quel est le message de l'Union européenne alors que la situation évolue sensiblement sur le, euh, le terrain militaire et que diplomatiquement, il y a une activité euh, et un mouvement sur, qui a été provoqué par le communiqué du Caire Je vous remercie. On n'a pas parlé de ça. Euh, for sure, oui. nous, nous avons parlé de la Libye, bien sûr. Et 
tous les deux, on était bien conscients des derniers événements et à propos de l'initiative de paix qui a pris l'Égypte, euh, nous sommes tombés d'accord sur le fait que toutes les initiatives qui soient en ligne avec le processus de Berlin qui essaye d'avoir la paix et la stabilité en, en Libye, c'est positif. Donc, on, on salue cette initiative-là parce qu'elle ne va pas contre le processus de Berlin, mais elle les renforce. Mais, once, uh, once again, une fois de plus, nous devons répéter, au moment donné l'occasion, je l'ai fait, qu'il n'y a pas d'alternative qu'à une solution politique qui reflète les conclusions de la conférence de Berlin, comme elle a été confirmée par une résolution du Conseil de sécurité, qui a été aussi prise avec l'accord et la participation de la Chine. Vous savez, quand on est en train d'avoir de, de moins de forces militaires sur le terrain, on est plus intéressé dans, le, dans un eau de feu. On est plus intéressé dans le fait quand les choses vont mal dans les domaines militaires. Et ça, parfois, c'est vrai d'un côté, parfois, c'est vrai de l'autre côté. Mais en tout cas, il faut profiter de toutes les occasions pour avoir une ceasefire, cesse le feu, et que les négociations ont de le format 5 plus 5, 5 plus 5, recommencent à nouveau. Et qu'il y ait une, une, recommence aussi les, les conversations sous l'égide de, de, des Nations Unies. Et il n'y a pas d'alternative à ça. Et je pense qu'en ça, on est bien d'accord avec euh, nos collègues chinois. Merci. Euh, Tommaso euh, Oui. Tommaso, on ne t'entend pas. On t'a vu brièvement, mais... Can you hear me now? Yes, it's fine. Thank you. Yes, it's fine. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, apologies for this. Uh, I, 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 just a question on China, if I may. Uh, just to know if you talked with your counterpart about the the fact that there are uh, plenty of uh, initiatives to shoot China in uh, EU courts, not only in the EU. Uh, to ask damages to China because China w uh, allegedly lied about the um, spreading of the, of the coronavirus at the beginning. Uh, just to know if you talked about that or not. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, no. And I am not aware that there are so many initiatives within China to the tribunals in Europe, to the court. Eh? Maybe they are, and they are very, I am very respectful for them, but, uh, but we haven't talked about it. Eh? Um, thank you. There is no European government engaged in these initiatives, as far as I know. Thank you. Uh, we now go to Odile, Odile Harvey. And please remember to indicate the media you're working for. I noticed Thomas I forgot. Yes. Uh, bonjour, uh, Monsieur uh, 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 Vice uh, uh, Représentant. Uh, Aujourd'hui, uh, oui, je, je travaille pour Radio Nord-Bretagne, une région qui a accueilli dès les années, uh, dès les années 60, qui a accueilli les premiers, uh, les premiers étudiants chinois uh, en, uh, en France. 
Et, et par ailleurs, aujourd'hui, euh, devaient s'ouvrir le, les journées de, de développement. Donc, nous pensons évidemment à l'Afrique. Euh, vous avez, si j'ai bien compris, vous avez indiqué euh, qu'en ce qui concerne le, la dette et puis euh, en cette période de coronavirus, euh, de soutien dans le secteur euh, de la santé. Mais euh, envisagez-vous aussi peut-être des coopérations triangulaires euh, dans le cadre de la stratégie, la stratégie Union européenne-Afrique et, euh, et également euh, avec la, la Chine. Odile, on t'a perdu. Attends. Oh. Euh. Coopération avec l'Afrique, avec la Chine sur l'Afrique, si vous pouvez développer un peu plus. Coopération. Odile, je pense qu'on a, on a compris l'essentiel du thème de ta question, donc je vais donner la parole aux représentants donc sur la coopération avec la Chine, euh, sur l'Afrique et en particulier dans le contexte de la pandémie. Bien sûr, on a, bien sûr, on a parlé de ça, mais la réunion a, a duré trois heures, on a traité énormément de sujets, on n'a pas approfondi la question au point d'entrée dans de quel point on peut faire la coopération triangulaire qui, qui vous préoccupe. Sans doute, ça fait partie de, de notre coopération dans le domaine de la coopération avec l'Afrique, mais honnêtement, on n'étant pas centré dans cette question de détail. Jacopo Jacopo, I will now go to Jacopo. Ok, euh, euh, merci aux représentants, merci Virginie. Et, et je vais poser ma question en anglais. Et, can you hear me? Jacopo, Hello? please remember Jacopo, to all. Please remember I know you're well known. I know you're well known. Please remember uh, to introduce the media you're working for before asking your question. Ok, if you can hear me, then I go ahead. Jacopo Rigazzi for Politico. And uh, um, I have a couple of questions uh, for the high rep uh, um, on uh, his views. One uh, is whether uh, he thinks that, uh, um, that the EU should follow uh, um, the UK in uh, offering uh, a, a specific uh, or accelerated uh, pathway uh, uh, to citizenship uh, for Hong Kongers. Uh, who want uh, uh, to leave. And uh, secondly, uh, whether the, the rep uh, uh, thinks that uh, uh, the EU should be more, uh, should put more resources in terms of uh, uh, fighting uh, against uh, 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 Chinese uh, uh, disinformation, propaganda, call it uh, as you want. Thanks. Uh, for sure we have to devote to allocate more resources in the fight against disinformation not only let's say the Chinese disinformation or the disinformation which can be related to Chinese sources of different types uh, there are a lot of people doing disinformation. Hmm? Among them, there are Russian, Chinese sources. Yes, I, I think we have to, to work more on that. And not only fighting against disinformation, trying to counterattack uh, the, the fakes, but to present a positive narrative. Hmm? The fight against disinformation asks also to present good information, not only to, to, to say, look, this is bad information. No, no, before, before pointing out which is wrong, maybe we have to present things the way they are, positive information, and maybe on that we haven't been enough active. My colleague uh, Vera, uh, the commissioner Vera, was saying that, and I think she is quite right. And that's why tomorrow we are going to present at the college a communication in order to strengthen our capacities on the information side. But at the end, you know, on the external action service, we can have more resources if the member states 
allocate these resources. I am happy to work more. I am happy to devote more resources, but the member states have to agree on that. And not only preaching, but providing. Hmm? Hmm? One thing is to preach, and another thing is provide. If you want to do something, please allocate resources to it. Hmm? And about uh, people escaping from Hong Kong, no? by the time being, and I, I, I don't see that there is uh, people escaping of Hong Kong as uh, it was the case from other places where thousands of people were flying. No, don't ask me to put examples, but there are many. No, and by the time being, uh, the European Union member states. Uh, no one has uh, taken any decision about it. United Kingdom has a special responsibility as being the, the colonial power and having strong links with the Hong Kong people. But uh, other member states also, because there are 350,000, 350,000 European Union citizens living in Hong Kong. Uh, thank you. I will now go to Catherine. <coughs> Hello. Hi, Catherine. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh. Uh, Catherine Pure, EU reporter. A high representative, um, you, you said that uh, you were looking into cooperation with China on Afghanistan. And I was wondering if uh, China would be considered um, a partner that would be suitable in this area, given the treatment of Uyghur Muslims. And I'm just wondering if you'd be able to say something specifically about the situation of the Uyghur. Did that come up? And um, you know, in a Muslim country like Afghanistan, will they really appreciate the intervention of a country that has such a poor record in its treatment of this minority? Thank you. I haven't said anything about Chinese intervention in Afghanistan. I'm just saying that China is a neighbor from Afghanistan. We have a strong interest in the stabilization of the country. I suppose China also. And we have to try to cooperate in order to ensure that uh, after 20 years of useless war, after the withdrawal of the American troops, and I suppose other Western country troops, we have to ensure not only stability, but also to try to preserve for, from our side the rights of the people, Afghan people, who have been getting especially women during these years. And I am looking for cooperation of uh, everybody who wants to do that. And if China is ready, why not? After all, China is a neighbor and also an important actor in the region. But I haven't said anything about China intervention in Afghanistan. Thank you. Um, I will now go to Asanasios. Thank you very much, uh, Virginie. Uh, hi, Representative. I have a pertinent question. It's not related to your meeting, but still, uh, as you have seen, uh, Greece and Italy have signed uh, the delimitation of their territorial waters, but at the same time, the tensions with Turkey are rising. And uh, Turkey is not only showing maps these days, they are already announcing that in three months, they will go there and then, we, then they will uh, try to explore the natural resources of the uh, uh, sea in the proximity of Crete and the Dodecanese. So, first of all, I would like to ask you, does the current framework for sanctions cover also that? Is that part of what we call uh, Eastern Mediterranean, first of all? And second, how can we end this whole deal in the first place? Last time you mentioned negotiations. Can we uh, force the two countries to go to The Hague and solve it once and for all, and how can we do that? Thanks. De qué acuerdo? No sé de qué acuerdo me habla. The Which agreement are you talking about? 
Which agreement? Could you please repeat? The framework agreement. I was referring before to the framework agreement of the uh, of the Council concerning the sanctions for the Eastern Mediterranean uh, in case Turkey uh, explores or uh, goes on with the drilling. And the second agreement I was referring was the potential agreement in the future between Turkey and Greece on the delimination of the continental shelf that can only happen in the court of The Hague. There is nothing new on that side. The framework agreement is still there. It for sure can be implemented to the events that you are referring, because it's part of the Eastern Mediterranean, and about the dispute between Greece and Turkey on territorial waters, uh, I cannot say any, there is any, anything new on that. And nothing that I can share with you, but, but uh, the Greek minister, my friend, my colleague, the Greek minister for Foreign Affairs, has sent a couple of letters asking for the Council focus on the relationship with Turkey. The relation with Turkey is also a complex relationship. It covers a lot of issues. We have been reaching out with Turkey on these issues from the Council of Foreign Affairs. We have been talking, not formal negotiations, but the Council will have to engage on that. On the next Council, under the request of the Greek government, this issue will be considered by the Council. Thank you. And now we have a very last question from Mont Montreal. Hello. Good afternoon. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, Mr. Borre, good afternoon. I have uh, two short questions. First one uh, about the uh, 5G topic between uh, European Union in, in, and China. You didn't mention a word today about that, so has it been discussed? Uh, second question is that um, I and not only me have the impression that uh, the European Union is, is, uh, Union is much harder to, uh, towards uh, Russia than to China. And does it mean that, uh, uh, don't you think that the situation uh, looks like uh, the one fifty uh, half a century ago when US and uh, China formed alliance against the European Union? Thank you, uh, against the Soviet Union, sorry, against the Soviet Union. Thank you. Contra la Unión Soviética, que tiene que ver la Unión Soviética aquí. Uh, no, said, uh, I, I said, uh, don't you think that the fact that the European Union is uh, much more harder towards Russia looks like the situation uh, like in uh, half a century ago when the United States and China formed an alliance between them against the Soviet Union. Um, bueno, uh, about 5G, I, I haven't said anything because nobody asked about it. For sure, 5G is part of our common concerns and is part of our technological relations and the security relations. We have also delivered a communication from the Commission about how to deal with 5G, taking into consideration both dimensions of the 5G deployment. But for sure we have been talking about it and I express my concern about the fact that, for example, uh, the participation of the European companies which are very good at 5G technology on the development of the 5G networks in China is not as big as it has been in the 4G just 10% until now, and this is part of our discussion about the openness of the Chinese markets and the development of European investments, and this imbalance that is uh, something that worries us. Yes, we have been talking about it, huh? from technological and security and trade or economic relationship part. 
and uh, and about uh, the your impressions, your your feelings. You know, uh, it's uh, I, I, I am not uh, I, I don't have enough information in order to evaluate how and why do you feel. Eh? But uh, what I can say to you is that uh, we are not in a tough position against one or against other. Uh, we just want to respect uh, our values and our interests. And when this requires to have a tough uh, position and to, to put sanctions, and it was the case with Russia during the Ukraine times, and today even, unhappily, the situation remains very difficult because there is a conflict in the border. I don't think we have such a situation in any border uh, related with China. No? There is no security issues as pressing uh, and as important as they have been and they still have in our eastern borders. So no, I don't see anything comparable to this. Uh, what do you remember of what happened many years ago between China, United uh, Soviet Union, and United States? No, we are not uh, on a confrontation line. We just want to have realistic relationships in order to defend our values and our interests. Thank you very much. And with that, I will conclude this press conference. Thank you very much, High Representative, for your time. And see you next time.